Well, last but not least is another artist um, who is the one, the only Richie Shazam, who is a multidisciplinary artist um, who is in New York, who's been featured in so many different places, Vogue, Vice, Interview Magazine, um, who also uses the power of images and thought to advance possibilities for, for us. And I think that it's really important for us to talk to Richie because of a work um, that she has done during this period. So without further ado, Richie Shazam, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations on the new film. It's so important for us to have this, especially in this time. Um, I'm so happy to be sharing space with you. 100%. What's going on tonight? You also had a like costume change. You and Alok, like in the middle, boom, Shazam. Uh, but you know what? That's the power of transness, honey. Uh, that's the power of transness. Um, one of the things I think is really important about your work, there's so many things that are important about your work that is powerful. People can see it on Instagram and can go to all the places that I just mentioned to see it and to learn from is um, in this moment of death and plague, um, it feel, felt for many people like the closing of possibilities, like we weren't gonna have a future, that everything was ending. But you used that period and it inspired you to create this amazing work called The Quarantine Diaries. And I'm just wondering how um, in this moment you felt inspired and driven to think about the future and how those things were linked for you. Absolutely. The, this time's been really essential and just looking at my past work and really reflecting and trying to find the light and positivity and to also just assess where we're going right now. We're constantly looking into the future, but in order to look into the future, I have to process my present. And I, I try to utilize provocation, subversion, fantasy, I really want to look outside the box always and to show the world, you know, that we're here, we exist, and we have very powerful stories. And I want people to understand the depths of my multi hyphenated identity. And um, yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that you're able to do so successfully is to use avant garde. Um, uh, images and approaches, and I mean that in the best use of that word, not esoteric or marginal, but like powerfully new in a way that we haven't seen before, to explore these issues of, um, of race and of gender and the way, and immigration and so many things that intersect for you. Um, and I was wondering how you balance those, how you integrate those complexities in your work, because that's also a thing that we have to do if we're going to have to have a future we can't segment we have to figure out a way to do kind of what you do through your work absolutely i think the really understanding my own story and where i want to where i want to place my story in the world it's really coming to terms with um you know the way i was raised and really looking into fantasy and looking into um endless possibilities i wanted I wanted more for myself and I wanted, I never thought it would be possible to tell my story visually the way I saw fit. And it meant a lot of perseverance and a lot of strength and just, you know, a lot of rejection. And I think that I want to rewrite and restructure, you know, beauty standards and aesthetics and really place our, our stories, our incredible revolutionary existence needs to be placed. And, you know, in a time of, just utter discrimination and er erasure and violence. You know, I want my work to be a timestamp of today, but for the future. So it can be intergenerational, intersectional in every sense of the way, just really to connect the world and connect the dots and the pieces. And yeah, I just continue wanna push the envelope and be outside of the box. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels that way. Um, there's so many images that I can think of right now where I've seen you in that it totally redefines beauty and to push the images. And again, I really want to encourage people to see your work because it's an example of art, not as something that's in museums, but really helping to change, change the way that we can see 
and think about the world around us. Um, that's what I really appreciate by, by what you uh, uh, in what you do um, through your work. Um, and I guess lastly, one of the questions that I had is that on this point, you are such a powerful, again, like a look, a very powerful artist that uses images that are iconic, quite frankly. You know, a lot of your images are iconic after we see them. It's hard to forget them in that way. Um, and I'm wondering when you were growing up in New York City as an immigrant, as a person who is trans, as a, who's a person of color, could you see yourself as you are now? Did you imagine yourself as you are now when you were a child? It's such a, it's such an intense question. Like just, you know, looking, I feel like I've, I've had so many different identities over the years, you know, I, I think that understanding that we're allowed to transform and we have this chameleon-like ability to, you know, to further explore and to further investigate who we are and who we want to be and to feel that comfort. And I think the power of my chosen family and the incredible people that have uplifted me and kept, kept me going to give me all the necessary tools to live freely and to exist freely. You know, I have just immense gratitude. And I think if I were to, you know, look, speak to my younger self, I would definitely tell them to keep pushing. And, you know, when someone says no, you're going to find a way to to say yes, no one's gonna close any door on you. Like, you're gonna find a way to open that door and come with a vengeance, you know? Like, I can live my truth. I can tell the stories I wanna tell. And yeah, I think I'm always going through it. It's never easy. It's so much anxiety and fear just existing, but my ability to story tell and to create through visual means has given me a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. I have to continue to um, tell stories. Well, someone just um, commented, go Richie, yes Richie. So um, you are clearly touching people um, with your work and through your work. And even in what you just said right now, I mean, I can't think of a better way to end um, our conversations tonight with what you just said is that we have the permission to be all of ourselves and all of our manifestations and we get to be chameleon. We don't only have to be one thing in our lives. We get to have the power of change as we, as we go along and change through our identities. And there is nothing more futuristic to me than that comment. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your work. Um, I really wanna encourage people um, to continue to seek it out and I hope to see um, what you do in so many more places. Thank you so much, Richie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to just be here and celebrate with you and have costume changes and just come alive. Um, I hope that we can get to a space where we don't have to be on Zoom meetings anymore. We can just celebrate each other IRL. Yeah, well, on a personal note, I know that you're Guyanese and once upon a time I had a guy and his boyfriend and I learned how to make all these different things like castle reef and cook up. So maybe that can be on the agenda. Girl, you gotta cook for me. <laughs> I'm coming over. I'm coming over. We're gonna turn up. We're gonna turn up. Thank you so much, uh, Richie. That is Richie Shazam, who is a multidisciplinary artist in New York um, who uses their work to push the boundaries of our understanding of race, gender, sexuality, immigration, and immigrant status, please check out their work, their powerful work on Instagram and also in Vogue and so many other places.